Welcome back, everybody. It's your time to head up on the Head Up Experience podcast, where we make education your business. This is Dr. Joe Salustio back with you on another episode. We're doing this introduction a little bit differently. We had limited time with our guest, uh, and really, we're, you're in for a treat here uh, with this guest that we had on the podcast, and I wanted to do her introduction in advance. But before I get to that, I have to tell you that my co-host on this episode is none other than Laura Ipsen, CEO of Elucian, who continues to support the Yet Up Experience podcast in amazing ways. And we always appreciate having Laura on as a guest co-host. Um, and our guest, you probably know her. She's been in journalism. She's been involved with Fortune 500 companies. Her name is Ariana Huffington. And she's the founder and CEO of Thrive Global, the founder of the Huffington Post, and the author of 15 books, including Thrive, and the Sleep Revolution. In 2016, she launched Thrive Global, which is a leading behavior change tech company with the mission of changing the way we work and live by ending the collective delusion that burnout is the price we must pay for success. She's also been named to Time Magazine's list of the world's 100 most influential people and the Forbes most powerful women list. We hope you enjoy this episode as we talk all about students and mental health with our guest, Ariana Huffington. Ariana, I think that uh, we're going to uh, talk about all your accomplishments. Um, there's too many to list, but I think we really need to focus on Thrive Global, the company that you founded, you're leading. And for our audience, assume for a moment that somebody has not heard of Thrive Global. Can you tell us about the organization and what you do? Thank you so much. Great to be with you and with Laura. I am delighted um, to be with you. I've watched the podcast and listened and love it and um, love uh, the work that Thrive Global is doing with Laura and Elusian. And, and the key is basically to improve daily behaviors and show the connection and the impact on both our health and our productivity. And when we talk about daily behaviors at Thrive, we talk about five main behaviors, you know, sleep, food, movement, stress management, and connection. And we break it down into micro steps, tiny little incremental daily steps that affect, um, as I said, both our health and our and our productivity that are also, actually, we call them a productivity multiplier. And um, I love how many Elusian employees are using the micro steps and writing about them. Um, it's, uh, it's really incredible. I just want to mention one that I love, Lisa Goldberg, who is Elusian Senior Director of market intelligence. And she wrote how she stopped multitasking all the time and how she became more productive when she became focused on a particular task. So what I love is micro steps are really small and manageable instead of new year resolutions, which is what often we think is the way to change behaviors which we tend to abandon two to three weeks into the new year. <laughs> yeah, my, my uh, New Year's resolutions are, are go away very quickly for most folks. And in fact, I'm one of the people that doesn't like to make them because I, I don't want to create failure for myself. I, I like to work through those micro completions too um, to make those small changes. And Laura, you know a bit about this as we've uh, Lucian's expanded um, uh, wellness is a, such an important part of our business for employees and for students that we serve. Well, it is. And, and if, you know, with Thrive Global, if we can make, create these micro steps and, and think about it every moment of our day, um, I, I see well-being improving for employees, both remote and coming into the office too. And it, it really has been tra transformational. People talk about it. They write about it. And so we're really proud to have the partnership at Lucian. But as we've talked, Ariana, there's so much that we can do together to impact this wonderful community of higher education. Uh, for us, we start with students, but it's faculty and administration too. And having, um, you had kids in college, I have two in now, but you see the, the stress and anxiety of students. And 
um, they work differently. So I'm really curious as you see the best practices and across the different communities that Thrive Global serves, how do you think about students at this, this critical time, higher stress and anxiety for all of them? My daughter's a student athlete. Um, what might be a little bit different for them to use Thrive Global? Uh, and what are you seeing from, from different generations in, the, in the, the mental health and well-being area? Well, Laura, you're absolutely right. We are seeing and we have the data that shows that over 50% of students um, talk about the high stress they're experiencing, which includes depression, anxiety. And what uh, we believe is key is to recognize that well-being micro steps should be part of education. Learning how to take care of ourselves should be part of any curriculum because if we're stressed out, anxious, depressed, we are not likely to learn uh, as effectively um, as we can learn when we've dealt um, with our anxieties and fears. And so I think we are entering this stage, and, and I'm so happy that you are such a believer in this because you can bring it to all the millions of students you reach. But we are entering this stage with, where we recognize that to produce um, successful students, you need to include uh, addressing their mental and physical health. And the two are very interconnected. Um, we tend to separate them. But, you know, if you're depressed or anxious, you are more likely to binge eat or binge drink mm -hmm. and affect your physical health. And if you are dealing with a disease, you are more likely to be depressed if you don't have tools to deal with it. And as you know, the reason we like to break it all into micro steps is because then it seems achievable and students can build a success muscle. Let me mention a couple of my favorite micro steps. We have the data that shows that majority of students sleep with their phones, either cuddled up in bed with them or, <laughs> or right next to them. And the truth is that then they end up spending a lot of the night tick-tocking, snapping, <laughs> uh, scrolling the news and not really sleeping and recharging. And a very small micro step is to charge your phone somewhere that you, is not within reach. Let's say you are in one dorm room and you don't have anywhere else to, um, to charge it. Charge it, you know, on top of the closet or <laughs> at the other end of the room, wherever, but not right next to you. So it's just small micro steps like that, that take into account, you know, the realities of student life can make a big difference. And then that means that when you wake up in the morning, you're more likely to take just 60 seconds to set your intention for the day or take some deep breaths or remember what you're grateful for before you jump immediately into what's waiting for you on your phone. Ariana, I also believe, and number one, I, I totally agree. You are, thank you because I have the little beds to charge yeah. my phone that you gave me. Um, but also the average student uses their phone as an alarm clock. And I'll tell you, they'll hit the snooze or they didn't charge their phone. They don't wake up. And especially because my son has an 8 a.m. class, I said, if your phone is away from you before you go to sleep, you have to get up. Yes. <laughs> you get going and it's less likely that you're going to miss your 8 a.m. class. So there's so many reasons. But, you know, the, the other thing you mentioned was this, the social media and the stress and anxiety there. I think Thrive can is, is a great opportunity for to take those little breaks and and to sort of break the um, constant feed of the social media, too, which um, can teach help. Um, everyone, but especially students, break from that. I mean, many high schools are saying now and schools are banning, banning devices during the learning um, times. And your research, I think, said that 75% of students are stressed, inability to learn. 
devices can sometimes cause that and your micro steps can help students get there too. Absolutely. And, uh, and make it doable and achievable and, and see the difference it makes. And um, we also see uh, the other behaviors, you know, the, um, around food. You know, here you are in college. I think colleges um, can make an effort to offer a variety of choices. Uh, but also students, the more we can educate them, that ultra-processed foods, sugars can have an impact not just on yeah. our physical health, but our cognitive health and our ability to focus and learn. So all of these uh, micro steps, including movement, you know, you may not have an hour to go to the gym, but can you walk around campus or can you walk uh, around the library if it's raining or uh, can you do it for 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there and then the other thing that we love around stress as you know is the reset you know based on the neuroscience that while stress is unavoidable for students lives for faculty lives for our lives um, cumulative stress is avoidable and within 60 or 90 seconds of conscious breathing, focusing on what brings us joy and gratitude, music, images, we can interrupt the stress cycle. So students, you know, can be um, fed these micro steps. We have hundreds of preloaded micro steps and interrupt the stress cycle. So there's so much at our fingertips that we just need to integrate. Absolutely. And let me ask you a question, because I one of the super exciting things that I saw was your partnership that you announced in July with OpenAI. If, if, I'd love to talk to you about AI and your thoughts there, but taking the example of students, we know in the learning environment that more and more students are demanding digital. They want personalized experiences in their learning. How are you thinking about OpenAI and the personalization of what you're doing with Thrive Global um, at every level, including students, but AI is is going to be so powerful for for really connecting to anyone with your with your capabilities. I'm I'm curious, what does it look like now? Well, Laura, I'm actually very optimistic about the power of AI to help students and the rest of us through hyper personalization um, adopt healthier habits. And that's why um, we launched this um, company, Thrive AI Health, uh, which is funded by OpenAI, Thrive Global, as well as Eli Lilly and the Alice Walton Foundation to build an AI health coach that can be like kind of the coach in your pocket. I love that. And guide you through the day. So as you said, especially students really are more open uh, uh, often to uh, communicating with a digital coach than a human coach. And if the coach is trained uh, on all their preferences, you know, the music they like, the way, what they like to eat, what how they like to exercise, how they distress, it can be very personal to them as opposed to giving generic advice. And um, and that way, we hope that we can democratize and scale the advantages of expert coaching. And I'm particularly excited about bringing it to colleges. We are working with Dartmouth at the moment, you know, whose president is particularly um, interested in mental health and physical health um, to bring it in to student life and see the impact it has both on their stress and mental health and on their learning abilities. I think we need to make that connection um, that the less anxious and the healthier you are, the more of a good lifelong learner you're going to be. And and Ariana, you know, we I think we are going to join forces on AI. We're using that for students to track their degrees, to their skill sets, to jobs, um, coaching them along the way that will use AI. 
but I'm convinced as we join forces um, and and move this to the cloud and SaaS that Thrive Global and your Thrive AI, AI Health will give uh, presidents and chancellors and administrators the the data that they need that shows the impact of these capabilities on student well-being, on their grades, their ability to graduate on time. And uh, so we're super excited to work on that partnership to scale. And, and so many institutions that we serve today are trying to figure out how to tackle this issue. Uh, and we know that students will respond to digital nudges. And if you can nudge them into the world of micro steps and, and what you all are doing, I, I think this is going to be very transformational for um, the higher education community in the U.S. and all over the world. Well, I'm really excited about our partnership because I believe that once we demonstrate the results, we can quickly reach a critical mass and change um, what are now very depressing numbers in colleges and high schools uh, around um, students and faculties, mental health and physical health. You know, uh, you know, just really quickly, I want to just dive real deep. Schools, universities, colleges, they've really got two goals when you have a student. You want to keep the student and you want to get that student to complete their degree. And if you look at all the things that they go through, like uh, anxiety, housing insecurity, food insecurity, even something that is, seems simple as registration can cause a student to have such overwhelming anxiety that they decide to quit. And and belonging, you know, how can these micro steps reduce the amount of stress, make me feel more part of the community, make me focus on the positive aspects of my life so I don't use um, a, a barrier like a bill or a, a mini car accident to um, define my life for the next couple of years? Because that's what can happen with students as they end up using these things as justification to make a bad decision. And so how do you keep that positivity and wellness in front? Well, you have to keep it in front of them all the time as these things manifest themselves. That's what it sounds like you're, that, that Thrive is doing. Joe, you're absolutely right. It's basically, how do we make students more resilient? Yeah, grit. And, you know, we as parents know that that's what we want for our children. Right, We know that we cannot protect them from adversity, from challenges, but we want them to have that grit and resilience to deal with the car accident or the difficult application or friction um, that appears every day. And that's why I think that teaching them hard skills has to go... Um, hand in hand with teaching them so-called soft skills like resilience that are not really soft. They're the foundation to real learning. And um, that's really what I'm excited about and how AI can help scale that. And students are used to having uh, tutors, um, study buddies, coaches. So this will be a digital coach that knows them really well so the recommendations and the nudges are going to be very personalized and effective. Go ahead, Laura. Oh, well, you know, I, I know that as the community of higher education listens to this podcast, they're going to want to know, how do I get to know uh, Thrive Global and OpenAI Health uh, better or Thrive, Thrive AI Health better? Where do institutions come to learn about you and students? Um, certainly, it will be with with the partnership we're going to work we're working on. But what? How, how do you? How are you best engaging with this community today? Well, uh, we are engaging uh, at the moment with uh, Stanford, the Yale School of Public Health, University of West Virginia, Dartmouth, um, and you and and we want to expand. Um, everywhere because the crisis is universal and we believe that this is a simple technology driven um science based solution that is based also on the need to really engage users i think one of the problems we've had with healthcare uh, laura and joe is that um 
we have minimized the importance of consumer engagement. How do we make um, the recommendations appealing, frictionless? In so many other areas of life, we do that, but not so much in uh, um, behavioral education. And that's what AI can help us achieve because of its um, um, superhuman memory, knowing everything about you, and therefore its ability to target nudges and recommendations. You make a good point. Healthcare is so reactive, right? The, the entire institution of healthcare, you get sick or you wait for something to happen, you get to the point of of the brink, then you go seek out healthcare. What you're talking about is how do we make health healthcare through AI preventative? How do we help you feel wellness long before you hit the brink so that you don't get to that point, so that you operate just with more health, wellness, and um, I mean, internal perspective than you would normally. I think that's just, it's got incredible, incredible consequences that we haven't even thought about yet. You're absolutely right, Joe. But also, given that um, 130 million people in America are already suffering from a chronic disease, and that includes many students, um, how can we help them um, through this AI health coach, optimize the management of their disease. Good Let's point. say if you're already dealing with obesity or type 2 diabetes or hypertension um, or depression or anxiety, um, medication is not enough. You also need to manage it through your sleep, your food, your exercise, your connection. You mentioned belonging earlier. And, and what Science shows us that these five daily behaviors are interconnected. Mm. So you can't just um, up, you can't just reach uh, students uh, through one of them. Like I'm wearing my aura ring to track my sleep. Right. You may be using an app to track your food. The truth is that if you're sleep deprived, you're going to crave bad carbs and sugars. Uh, if you don't move, it's going to affect your sleep. So I think the interconnectedness among these five behaviors is something which we are bringing to market. And this AI health coach is going to help um, achieve this first microscopic and gradually bigger and bigger improvements in habits. And, and Ariana, as you bring it to market, I know one thing that you're very passionate about is um, access and access to um, underserved communities and to really democratize access to mental health. Um, Joe and I did a podcast with uh, the former president of Southern New Hampshire University, uh, Dr. Paul LeBlanc, who talked about AI and the focus on learning and access to learning and also AI um, changing the world to be more of a caring economy and dealing with issues of access to learning, which will impact mental health too. So how, how will Thrive Global, maybe working with the insurance companies and corporations and higher education, truly help democratize access to mental health, um, uh, opportunities to improve mental health? Well, one of the ways, Laura, is to recognize that right now, um, social media companies um, tend to increase engagement by tapping into people's basest instincts, mm. you know, outrage, fear, anxiety, hatred even. Hatred. But we know that students, like all of us, are a mixture and we also have the better angels of our nature. So I see AI as becoming like an antidote, a defense against the way we are constantly being hacked by social media companies appealing to the worst in us. If we can have, I'm not naive to think every company will do it, but if we can have even a few companies that... Uh, maximize profits by appealing to what's best in us, um, we will be able to 
change health outcomes and demonstrate that you can still make money by appealing with what's best in us. I was just talking to a, a JP Morgan CFO forum and I made that point, you know, for-profit companies need to have aligned incentives. And I believe that you can align incentives uh, to use AI for good instead of the default position now, which is to use it to appeal to what's worst in us. Well, and I, I love the opportunity to, to help students on their health journey um, because right now many institutions are struggling with how do we govern AI? Um, several feel, many feel like it's it's a very challenging time in how the applications are for students. So being able to provide something where AI is very powerfully helping students in this journey um, when they, we relieve mental and physical stress and health issues, it helps learning and it keeps them on track with the learning journey. So that's uh, even more exciting, Ariana. Absolutely. It can become like a Sherpa, a guide uh, on their journey. Well, you said alignment, and I, the stars aligned here for us to have this conversation, but we have just scratched the surface on the possibilities of, of what you're doing at Thrive Global with artificial intelligence and really the journey that students are on these days and the challenges that they experience. I know as a higher ed administrator how difficult it can be for students and why I'm so excited to be here at Elucian and talk with you about Thrive Global and what you're doing, Ariana. It's been an absolute honor to have you here. And I know we're stealing time from you, but I would steal more <laughs> if I had it to have even more great conversation. Um, but but so I want to let you... So let's ask one more question. Go. I want Ariana to, to look to the future. Yeah. Where do you think we can be in five years with the application of AI in, in health and well-being? So that's a great question, uh, Laura. So um, Sam Altman and I did a fireside chat recently, and I asked him, um, what is the world your children are going to inhabit. And he said, my children will be the first generation of children that will never be more intelligent than AI. Mm, that's interesting. So wow. If, if AI is going to have higher cognitive abilities than humans, which is the expectation in the next two to five years, then we need to ask this fundamental question, what makes us uniquely human? If it's not our IQ, we need to recognize that there is a deeper essence, which is our humanity, which is our spirit, our empathy, our compassion, our ability to connect, all these deeper qualities that make us distinctly human are going to become more and more important, and they're going to be at a premium during the, a time when AI can take over a lot of the um, tasks that require just smarts. So how do we move from just smarts to wisdom, good judgment, empathy, connection? I mean, it could be an incredible dawn of a new era provided we train AI to help us become better humans. You know, after all, why should we just assume that AI will keep getting better and better and humans will stay the same? I love that. We also keep getting better and better. Darn right. Right? Absolutely. It's our, AI is yeah. our coach. It will and not take our humanity away. Okay. Let's use AI as our coach to keep getting better and better. And then we can use the AI tool in a way that's going to be good for humanity. Joe, where's the applause on the, your sound effects? Come on, bring it on. There it is. Wow, oh, God, amazing. Well, I'll tell you, um, this has been a complete honor, first of all, to have Laura Ipsen, CEO of Elucian, on this podcast and uh, my fearless leader, um, doing great, amazing, visionary things in higher education, and I'm, I'm honored to be a small part of it. And Ariana Huffington, the work you're doing, um, global, mind-blowing, and, and mind-improving, if you will. How do you like that? Um, we wow. appreciate you, and... Um, thank you for being here. 
Thank you so much, Joe. And Laura, it's always such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for our partnership. Well, thank you so much. Together, I think we are going to change the future for what we see with our students in higher education in the world. And we're just so proud to have the opportunity to work with Thrive Global at Eleusian and uh, be part of the journey with you and, and making a difference. So thank you so much for joining us, too. Thank there you, you have it, everybody. You just add up. <laughs>